How you doing? I thought I would talk about the Easter Island Moai. Someone had uh, sort of asked me about it. Well, we're dealing with mythology. When we get into the Moai of Easter Island. But there is a, a beginning to mythology. The ancient Egyptian mythology was the most comprehensive mythology the world has ever known. And so I go into the ancient mythology to explain more recent mythologies, because all the mythologies come from the ancient Egyptian mythology. So we we'll get into the Moai from that perspective. And we'll start with, uh, there are seven Moai facing the ocean, okay, facing out to sea. Of course, seven is a number that often comes up in uh, all mythologies. So we are given an idea of uh, the seven Moai facing out the sea. And what this could mean mythologically. Well, the number seven means peace, prosperity, goodwill. It means welcome also. Like, welcome to the island. Welcome to Easter Island. So when visitors came to the island, they were welcomed, and it was said to them by the welcoming party, seven. Well, seven means welcome, amongst other things that I just mentioned. So those folks the guests, those who are come to visit the island and the inhabitants there, they will give um, a brief speech on uh, their purpose in coming and their credentials. And when they finish this uh, brief uh, speech, they would say, eight. Okay. So now the eight, of course, includes seven, right? But eight goes a step further. The seven is dealing with primarily the elemental powers. But the eight involves the seven elemental powers plus the soul of the human being. And it is the human soul that resurrects. So when they say eight to the host of the island, those that have come down to the shore to meet them as they come over, come on, shore, they say eight, indicating that they are offering them a blessing of the seven elemental souls or spirits combined with the human soul, you see. And so this gives us the often spoken of number eight. For example, the Kimite god, Heru, who became hawk-headed, and when he did, he became the eighth one, you see. And his star 
was an eight-pointed star. Well, the same thing with the Christ. The Christ star was an eight-pointed star. This has to do with the seven elemental powers and the soul of the human being. It is the human soul that resurrects. So we go from the mythology with number eight. Number eight takes us from the mythology, which deals with uh, natural phenomena. And it takes us into the doctrine of the resurrection of the soul. You see. So this is involved with the welcome. When they say, I give you seven. And when the visitors say, I give you eight. So now we see where... Uh, we see the, the significance of the seven moai that's facing out to sea. The seven moai is a symbol of welcoming visitors to the island. Okay. So now we'll move on to uh, the Kukatori, who was kneeling, Kukatoi is a Moai, kneeling uh, in front of an egg or eggs in a meditative posture. So Kukatoi was meditating on the eggs. Also, there was said that there was a bird somewhere nearby. We'll say that then this bird okay, symbolizes the earth god Seb. Seb was the god of earth. And his symbol, which he wore on his head as a headdress, was the geese or goose or duck. Okay, that laid the golden egg. You see. So Kukatura is meditating on the egg. You see, but uh, there's a story behind the egg, and that is that uh, the shell of the egg is equivalent to a mummy wrapping, as the mummy wrappings wraps up, you know, actually the child soul of God within. This within all people, actually. Also. Uh, the egg is equivalent to the human a skin that wraps his body. The skin of the human wraps the human body. And within the human body, there is the spark of a child soul or God. Okay, so this is what Kukatu is meditating on. Because the child God within all humans, okay, can be shaped and formed to the desire of the human being. If the human being takes time to do this, to shape and form the mystical child within, which happens to be the true self. Okay, so this is what uh, Kukatori is meditating on, shaping and forming the child within the egg, or we can say um, the chick that's developing within the egg, equivalent to the uh, the child soul of God that develops within the human being if he if a human being decides to develop the child within himself and shape and form this child to the desire of the human being. You see? Well, this is what Kukatura was doing. She's shaping and forming 
the child or the chick within the egg. Okay. So that, I hope that gives uh, some insight, some understanding about the Moai on Easter Island. They are mythological. I mean, the stones, true, are there. They're real, but their underlying meaning is mythological and mystical. You see, mythological when we come when we're talking about the natural phenomena of our world and the soul of the human being. But let me continue for a second. There are some OI that were still in the process of being completed. You, they carved out a stone and we, they showed some pictures of some of the Moai that had not been completed. They had not been completely carved out of the side of the rock or mountain. And what does this mean? What could this possibly mean? Some people say, well, the folks just gave up, dropped their tools and vanished, disappeared. You know, maybe, but maybe not. It shows that the Moai that are uncompleted are waiting, they're waiting to be born into the world. That is, born into the world from the womb, indicated by the rock or the stone in which the Moai that are incompleted, are resting. They are resting in the womb of the earth until conditions are right, and then folks will come and finish the job. And the Moai, uncompleted, will be completed and will be born into the world from the womb of the mountain. Thank you very much, and sub subscribe. I have so much more to talk about, and uh, I would certainly like to share the insights from the perspective of ancient, of ancient mythology. Thank you very much, and uh, subscribe.